Hey everyone, so today we are reading Jim Butcher's Blood Rites on to chapter 25. So if you've missed the previous books, which like I said, this one's book 6, do look in their respective playlists. Also, if you've missed any of the previous chapters, do look down below in that playlist. But also, while you are reading along in your book with me, please do make sure to go ahead and subscribe to my channel and share this video with others so that we may help this channel grow. Now, let me go ahead and jump right in here to chapter 25. Trixie, Scrump, Genosa, Vixen, Expeditious, leaned against the door and said, Don't get up, Barry, and don't move your hands. Her voice shook with nervous energy, and the barrel of the gun waved drunkenly back and forth. The knuckles of the hand holding the cell phone to her ear were white. I don't want to shoot you. You know, people don't want to crash their cars either, but there's always some idiot who drives and talks on the cell phone at the same time. And crunch, I said. Maybe you should put down the phone until we're done, just to be safe. Don't give me orders, she snapped, pushing the gun at me like it was some sort of sexual aid. She wobbled on her high heels when she did, but managed not to fall over. Don't you dare give me orders. I shut up. She was already wound pretty tight. I have a bad habit of turning into a real wise-ass when someone makes me nervous. It's just a reflex. But if I pushed Trixie too hard, her precarious self-control might snap, accidentally setting off the gun. I'd die of shame if she unintentionally shot me. So I resolved to keep my mouth shut. Mostly. Okay. Keep your hands right there, and don't move. Can I sip some of my coffee at least? I asked. I just got it to the right temperature. She scowled. No. You never got me my latte. Right. I said, good point. We sat there for a couple of minutes while my arms started getting tired holding coffee and a useless phone in place like that. So, what happens now, Miss Vixen? What do you mean? Well, there's me, and you here, and then there's that gun. Usually, there's a specific purpose to using a gun as a negotiation tactic, but so far, all you're doing is pointing it at me. I'm no expert, but as I understand it, you get to make demands or something. I know you're afraid, she spat. That's why you're talking. You're nervous and talking because you're afraid of me. I'm paralyzed at the thought of losing my senior division shuffleboard career, I said. That's just how much you scare me. But I'm also curious about our next step. There is no next step, she said. Um, so we sit here for the rest of eternity? She sneered. No, in a minute I'm going to leave. I lifted my eyebrows. Just like that? Yeah. You beautiful fiend, I said. I wouldn't ever have guessed that that was your plan. To do nothing. She smirked. It's all I need to do. I thought you might be worried that I would tell the police about it afterward. Trixie laughed and looked genuinely amused. Oh? You're going to tell them what? That I held a gun on you for no reason, did nothing, and then left? Well... Yeah. Which are they going to believe? That crappy story, or that you confronted me when I was alone, made unwanted sexual advances, and that I had to pull the gun out of my purse to discourage you? I narrowed my eyes. Actually, that wasn't a stupid plan, which made me doubt Trixie had come up with it all on her own. But why hold me in place for only a few moments? I checked the room's clock. 11.40. Oh, I said, you want me sidelined for the next time you call up the curse. Her eyes widened. How did you know that... She broke off abruptly, her head twitching, evidently listening to someone on the phone. Oh, I know. I'm not telling him anything. I don't see why you... She winced. Oh, oh, yes, all right. Do you want to come down here to do this? Fine, then, fine. Her face darkened into a vicious scowl but most of her attention came back to me. Who's on the phone? I asked. None of your business. Actually, it is. 
literally, since I'm being paid to find the identities of whoever is swinging that curse. Trixie let out an ugly laugh. What difference would it make if you did? It isn't as though the police are going to believe the use of magic curse as a murder weapon. Maybe. But cops aren't the only authority in the universe. Anyone ever tell you about the White Council? She licked her lips, and her eyes flickered around the room. Of course they did. She lied. So you know that employing magic to murder another human being carries the death penalty. She stared at me. What are you talking about? The trial won't be real long. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes tops. And once they find you guilty, you'll be executed on the spot beheaded with a sword. Her mouth worked uselessly for a second. You're lying. I'm an honest guy. Maybe you're in denial and projecting. I am not, she snapped. You're just trying to scare me. It's just a lie. I wish, I said. My life would have been simpler. Look, Trixie, you and whoever you're working with might get away with it if you back off right now, leave off the curses, and get out of town. She lifted her chin defiantly. And if we don't? Bad things happen. You're already beaten, Miss Vixen. You just don't know it. If you roll out that curse again, you're going to get a taste of it yourself. Are you threatening me? Not a threat, I said. Just a fact. You and your ritual are done. Oh, she said, regaining her composure. You underestimate my powers. I snorted. You haven't got any powers. Yes, I do. I've killed with them. You've killed with a ritual, I said. What's the difference? The difference, I said, is that you have, if you have any skill of your own at magic, you don't need a ritual. Whatever. They're the same thing anyway. Magic. Power. No! I said, look, a ritual spell like that doesn't have anything to do with you. It's like a cosmic vending machine. You put two quarters in, push the right button, and the curse comes flying out, courtesy of some psychotic otherworldly force that enjoys that kind of thing. It doesn't take skill. It doesn't take talent. You could be a freaking monkey and invoke that curse just as well. There's no practical difference, she maintained. Yes, there is. What? she asked. You're about to find out. Instead of looking uncertain, she smiled. You're talking about the sacred circle you had set up in the soundstage. She'd recognize the circle? Oh, crap. We knew you'd try something, she went on. All I had to do was follow you when you came in. I don't know what you thought you were going to accomplish, but I'm pretty sure all of your squiggles and candles aren't going to do whatever you wanted them to, given that I broke your circle and smeared all your chalk lines. And she was right. Double crap. Trixie. I said, you can't possibly think this is all right. Why are you doing this? I'm protecting what's mine, Larry. She said, it's business. Business? I demanded. Two people are dead already. Giselle and Jake are at death's door. And I don't even want to think about what would have happened to Inari if I weren't there. What the fuck do you think you're doing? I don't feel any need to explain myself to you. I blinked at her slowly and then said, You don't know either. You don't know who he's marrying. She didn't say anything, but her eyes blazed with scorn and fury. I shook my head, continuing. So you've just been eliminating all the women around Arturo Genosa, one at a time? You don't even know if you're killing the right person? There's only one little girl toy left pretty enough to suit his tastes, she said. Emma, I said. And once she's gone, I won't have to worry about her stealing what's rightfully mine. I stared at her for a second. Are you insane, I said. Do you think you'll get away with this? I'd love to see some prosecutor try me for witchcraft, she responded. Trixie was too stupid to believe me about the White Council and too self-absorbed to keep my name straight. But for crying out loud, she had to be human. Hell's bells, Trixie. Emma's got kids. So did Hitler, Trixie snapped. No, he didn't, I said. He had dogs. Whatever, same thing, Trixie said. I checked the clock, 1143. 
In four minutes, give or take, Emma would die. Trixie's attention snapped to the phone, and she listened for a moment, throwing out a terse, yes. Then the phone abruptly squealed with feedback, and Trixie flinched hard enough to make me worry that she'd lost control of her weapon. Damn it, she said. I hate these stupid cell phones. Cell phones are the caged canaries in the coal mines of the supernatural. When a little magic gets moving, cell phones are some of the first pieces of equipment to be disrupted. Odds were good that someone on the other end of the phone was starting to move energy around, which meant that the Malachia was coming to kill Emma. And as long as Trixie kept me in the green room, there wasn't a damned thing I could do to prevent that. Thank you for listening to Chapter 25 with me of the Dresden Files. Hopefully you were able to subscribe to my channel, like or dislike, and leave a comment below. And also share this video with uh, friends, family, or others in the area. I do want to thank you so much for helping me out and helping me grow this channel. Um, and you all have a wonderful and blessed day.